Hello all, welcome to another Fusion Friday. My name is Phil Brown with Next Gen Cam. Today we're gonna to go over how to utilize the Mighty Bites and how to speed up your jigs and fixtures for getting these things placed quick and efficiently. So as you can see over my left shoulder here, we go ahead and have our chart pulled up from Mighty Bites website. Link to their website down below so that you guys can quickly reference this data. But let's jump right into this. So as you're gonna see on my screen here, we already have our Mighty Bite pulled up. I'm using part number 26050 in case you want to reference this for yourself as you go. I have the specs pulled up on another sheet. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do a little prep work to the actual Mighty Bite. So let's go ahead and capture our design history. That's very important. Let's convert these bodies into components. And then let's go ahead and hit save. So I really don't personally care too much about labeling my components. You can relabel them if you want. This just allows me to get a good starting point when we bring our pocket in. So we're going to go out and we're actually going to start a brand new file. We're going to create our sketch and pick our plane. I usually don't concern myself too much with what plane I'm drawing on because I'm always going to come back and adjust it after the fact. So we know our Mighty Bite is roughly three quarters by three quarters. You could dimension this as you go. Personally, I like to treat fusion a little bit more like modeling clay, as you're seeing me do here, is not adding dimensions until after the fact. So again, a little hiccup there due to the plane selection, creating my circles tangent to my edges. And one final thing I'm going to do is throw a center line on here so we could set up our actual tap drill hole as well as our tap drill size. So go ahead and create that hole. As you guys can see, I forgot to turn off my construction plane. At any time, you could actually toggle that on, toggle off. The X key is also a good way to be able to toggle that on and off. So let's go ahead and add a few dimensions here. Let's start with our tap drill size of 2014. We're going to go ahead and set the depth of our pocket to 0.75 like it calls for in the drawing. Our total width is also 0.75. However, I want to go ahead and add in a little extra. So you could actually do math in these data fields which is super nice, so that we're adding in that extra 80. I'm going to go 200 on my relief cuts. Personal opinion, that way I can get back there with like a um, 3 16 end mill and clean them out very quick. Or if you wanted to, you could always drill those with a drill bit as your first operation. Lastly, we want to go ahead and make sure these two guys are equal. Some of you at home are probably wondering why my lines and my background looks a little different. I prefer to actually utilize Fusion's a different viewing environment. This makes me feel a little bit more comfortable and a little easier to see stuff. However, the white lines are fully constrained just like yours would be black. To test that theory, if I grab some of these shapes or points and try to pull them, you're going to notice they don't go anywhere. So now that we actually have this all sketched out, we can extrude our profiles. So I'm going to use the hotkey E. You also could have gone up here to the toolbar and clicked the actual extrude button. You may have had to click finish sketch first. But let's start by setting the depth of our pocket we want. So I'm going to go ahead and check my drawing. It's looking to be about 280 thou depth of pocket. My sketch did automatically turn off, so we're going to turn that sketch back on. And then I'm going to rotate down so I can extrude the actual spot where my screw is going to sit. Again, we're going to look at our charts here. We're looking at a depth of 570. We're going to go ahead and type that in as a negative because we want to continue downwards and set that depth. So as you can see, I very quickly got to the point where I've basically made a negative of the pocket in which my Mighty Bite is going to sit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save here. And this is going to be my pocket. And now I can start to kind of stack and place things together. So if I go back to my Mighty Bite, as you remember, I went ahead and actually did a little bit of prep work here. Don't mind if you missed out on that. You could always come back to it. But the first thing I'm going to do before I bring everything in is let's just rigid group this together so it doesn't go anywhere. And to confirm it doesn't go anywhere, I could actually click and drag it around. Also, if I have my origin turned on, you'll see I can drag that and everything sits together. If yours isn't doing this, again, it's because I converted mine to components. I would suggest going back and watching that kind of first step that we did. But let's open up our data panel. Let's bring in our pocket. I'm going to go ahead and close our data panel back out as well, just so we can get a little bit more viewing area. And I'm going to slide this guy out of the way so that we can see what's happening. So right out the start, you can see I have the pocket brought in. I'm going to go ahead and break that link. I don't want for any reason if we have to modify the pocket that it updates the original. This also allows me to reuse the same pocket for multiple sizes, just changing a few dimensions. So let's start with our joint. 
By placing my mouse on the cylinder face, if I hold control, I can slide over and grab that flat where it meets, and then I can go straight to my origin with this and place it. I'm going to repeat that process. We're going to go ahead and right click and we're going to say repeat joint to pull top dead center of my screw. And then I'm going to do the same thing, holding control, place that screw where it belongs. A little secret here is sometimes you don't know a dimension. We can find it on the fly. So I'm going to set this dimension to one inch. You're seeing that as a negative. Yours may be a positive and that's okay. But we need to know the distance from tangent of the radius here to the bottom of our flat, right? So if we look at our dimensions, you're going to have a distance of 660. What 660 actually is, is center of that radius to the flat. Now, maximum would be the far side of the radius, and minimum is going to be the near side of the radius. So we want that 570. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And what happened there is that actually copied it for me to go back to my joint and to actually add that dimension. And if yours was a positive, you could subtract it. But we're going to go ahead and push Control v which allows me to paste, and hit Enter. And just like that, as you see, we actually have our Mighty Byte placed down inside of our pocket that we're going to use to create our jigs and fixtures here in a minute. So a few more things. Let's turn off the joint. Let's turn off the origin and save this. So we can go ahead and say Ready for Jig Plate. And let's go design our jig plate. So again, we're going to jump into a new document. I'm actually going to start this off with a component this time. And this is our jig plate. And we could do this with a very fast couple of rectangles once again. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to roughly 2 inch by, let's go about 4. I want a little bit of a step up here, which is fine. I actually did that the wrong way. So we're going to go ahead and hit Control Z to undo. R for rectangle is the hotkey. But all I'm looking to do is just create my pocket based on where I want my stock to sit. And then again, let's add a couple of dimensions here. So we're going to keep this maybe half inch off the backside. My raw material is coming in at, let's say, point, actually, let's go 2.020, right? So it's a little bit oversized. Piece of material we pulled off the shelf just happens to be four by two. And it's raw form. Yours may be a little smaller by the time you shave it down. But what I'm really looking for is a way to actually set this all up. One dimension I can actually steal for the backside is if I look at my drawing again, dimension D is that minimum kind of height for the Mighty Bite to get to. So again, I could use dimension D at 150 or I could over exaggerate that to 200 to get my dimensions set. Last thing is the depth of my actual stock. Let's go ahead and get it down in there about a half of an inch. So we're going to finish that. And again, we're going to extrude this all out. So let's go ahead and grab those couple of boundaries. And let's just say we're going with a 12 inch piece. So now that that's done, if we activate our top level, we could save this as our jig assembly. And now I can bring in our Mighty Byte that we've actually prepped here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this guy in. What you're going to notice is it's going to come in basically at the origin because the way we placed it. I'm just going to move it up in a way a little bit to make my life easy for getting it where it needs to go. So let's go ahead and ground our jig plate because it's where we want it to be. And let's use a joint to actually take the top front edge of that pocket. And I usually start at the center of whatever I'm working on. So in this case, we need to flip it over. Rotate it 90 degrees and get it where it needs to be. So as you guys can see here, I very quickly placed my pocket as well as the entire piece of that actual Mighty Byte. And from here, I just pattern everything. So I'm going to say component pattern, the Mighty Byte, based on one of my straight edges, we use symmetrical. And we go ahead and drag that out and set how many we want. So maybe we're going to go about five down this piece, get them all placed where I want them. And now the last thing I just need to do is do a combine to cut out those pockets. So if we go back to the top and say combine, we're cutting the jig plate, utilizing those pockets. And at first, yours may not be showing up red. If that's the case, it's probably because it still thinks it's a join versus a cut. So go ahead and toggle your cut and hit OK. And now if I wanted to, I could turn these pockets off. Just so you guys know, if you hold control, 
and you come through and you double click these you can then hit the v key and what will happen is it'll actually turn them off so it's hidden in my case i'm just going to very fast go back grab all of these and hit v and hide them so that you guys can see i now have my 201 tap drill size i have my pocket reference for all my mighty bite locations and that allows me the ability to go through and actually mill this jig in a fast and efficient way to hold my stock. This works with a lot of different Mighty Bite sizes. I know we use the pit bull clamp in this scenario, but this is something that helped me a ton when I was on a shop floor to get this done. I also want to remind all of you that we are giving away a space mouse as well as a CAD mouse. Link in the bio below on how you could sign up for that. As well, the information to the Mighty Bite website where I found all my information is also down in the bio. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe, and look out for our next video next Friday. Thank you.